Hello relatives, this is Dr. H. Welcome to this week's Schlagbite for the week January 14th, 2008, entitled Red Clouds at Sunset. I was in Red Wing, Minnesota last week and I visited with Winfred Red Cloud at the Prairie Island Lakota community. He is the tribe's cultural liaison, that is the traditional intermediary between the tribe and the outside world. We were introduced by my friend and brother in the Fairview Hospital CEO. And it started gently, as is the custom. We listened to each other's stories, experiences, and relationships, and we talked about health and healing. Winfred is in his mid-fifties. His face is lined and rutted, his hair tied into braids that reach mid-chest. He looks like he should be the cultural liaison. He is Oglala Lakota from the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota and the great-grandson of the great Oglala chief, Red Cloud, who led the Red Cloud War in 1886 to 1868, which resulted in a complete victory for the Oglala and temporarily preserved their homeland on the Powder River. Chief Red Cloud was the only Indian leader to win a major war against the United States. Winfred married a Metawakantan Lakota woman from Prairie Island and has lived there for about 20 years. In addition to his work on the outside, he also teaches the Lakota children to speak their tribal language, he sponsors dance and drumming group, and they travel to schools all over the state. They perform, they tell their stories, and it makes the kids feel good about themselves and they see non-Indian kids looking at them in a different way. Winfred was candid about the difficulties that the kids faced as well. The casino, he said, was a blessing and a monster. It paid for lots of tribal improvements and is profitable enough to give every tribal member a significant yearly income. For kids under 18, the money is kept in a trust fund until they are of age and then they get a lump sum payment. Easy money without work is not the traditional way, Winfred said. They don't need to do anything to get it. And they're dropping out of school early. They're being recruited by gangs. They sell and use drugs. They're losing touch with being Indian. I'm trying to recruit them too. But too many of them don't want to hear my stories. Winfred's lament is also mine. We both know that it is those who tell the stories who define the culture. And today's storytellers don't sit around campfires with drums, but rather video screens and with games of unrelenting violence. Their stories are told with blood-curdling sounds of the dying, bloodletting, torture. And those stories are now even being told in churches. The New York Times recently reported that churches are using video game nights, which feature mature-only violent entertainment, to recruit young men. They are stocking their youth centers with game consoles so that teenagers can flock around big screens and shoot it out. The religious leaders say it's the most effective thing they've done to get kids hooked on coming to church. We have got to be telling better stories. We do not teach kids respect to value life by seducing them with the thrills of violence and pornography. Our survival and the quality of our lives should not be defined by stories of bloodletting and suffering, but rather by the dance and drumbeat that kindle the human spirit. I'm hoping that there's another red cloud at sunset of this generation who can find a way to win his war and preserve his culture for another generation. That's what I'm thinking. Let me know what you're thinking on the Healing Cafe discussion forum and we'll talk among ourselves. Remember, the better we tell our stories, the better we connect. Nobody makes it alone. Have a great week. I say this for all my relations. Mitakuyasi.